Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, also known as... We finally thought of a cool name for that disavowing thing that we do pretty much every movie. Ethan Hunt returns, just, you know, without his wife this time, sort of rendering the third movie even more pointless than it already was. He is now being chased by an officer or government agent or something from Russia because of an explosion at the Kremlin, which has the Russians kind of thinking that America is looking to start a new war with them. The entire IMF is disavowed, and Ethan and three other people, two of them agents, are all that's left to try to prevent something from going horribly wrong. I'm not going to give away exactly what might happen. And, yeah, so, this somewhat explores the cost of being a spy and the life or death decisions that have to be made and having to live with that choice. We have one of our agents, Jane, is actually haunted by, you know, feeling guilty over having sent an agent who ends up dying. The, the characters are quite interesting, at least the, you know, the agents, um, the, the good guys, the bad guys are generic as they come and in fact barely speak or show any personality whatsoever, you know, one way or the other. The film tries way too hard with humor and dialogue with, you know, it's very hit and miss, both aspects. The action is quite good, and this also has some very effective spy elements, so, you know, it really, it kind of deserves to be one of these films, and it's certainly the best other than the very first movie. It has higher stakes than the first movie. It does, of course, copy the basic idea of Ethan more or less being on his own, although this time he does get more help from his fellow agents than in the other films. And, you know, each of them actually play a genuine role. They, not only do they have character, they genuinely do have, you know, emotions and are affected by their various situations, and it adds an extra layer of tension to an already very tense film that these people could actually bend under this pressure at any moment, and they are the last chance for stopping this. There are some very nice exotic locations, and it is a very visually impressive film. It's a pretty well-paced film. It doesn't really slow down at any moment, although this does also get distracting at times with how the film actually literally seems utterly terrified of the concept of two seconds of silence. If you like this review and want a more detailed one, check below. It's there as a video response. If not, it'll be in the description box. I've reviewed other parts of this series. The links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.